This is a blizzard of balls! I can't believe humanity was capable of degrading itself so low as to produce such an insulting catastrophe of ass! Miraculous Ladybug is a zombie because it's dead and yet it keeps on going. Zombies don't know what they're doing. All they know is eat brains and preferably other body parts. Miraculous Ladybug doesn't know what it's doing anymore with its plot and characters. All it knows is to manipulate and scam the viewers into thinking that it's still a good show by teasing the upcoming day that these two idiots might end up together. Well, guess what, you old kook? I'm not falling for it. Never again! <laughs> Because I know this show is dead, and it has absolutely no chances for redemption. Maybe there is. Yes, there is a way to save this show. Just as how there is a way to save people from being zombified. Grab the handgun, and, with full competence, pull the trigger. And just hope that the guy will resurrect into a pedestrian or something. Just like Miraculous Ladybug. In my opinion, the one and only way for this stupid ass show to be redeemed is to kill it. Restart from the beginning, and rewrite a lot of things. Make sure the Ladybug, Rabbit, and Rooster are not as powerful as the show claims them to be. Make sure the Santa Monster explanation is not that stupidly complicated. And most importantly, make sure to make Adrian a Aggressed, the secondary protagonist that Miraculous Ladybug needs and deserves. Speaking of which, he truly is the biggest wasted potential. I've said that back then, and I don't think I want to take it back. Not because I'm still a fan of Adrian, but because as a critic, I really think Adrian as the secondary protagonist that the viewers are supposed to be loving, sympathizing with, relating to, and rooting for, could have worked a hell of a lot. Adrian's entire character, life story, and personality are perhaps the most interesting things in the show, aside from this woman's beautiful face. But the entire execution is embarrassing. You know, that's the problem with the writers of MLB. They're so goddamn good at coming up with ideas. Shut up! But when they get to the other important part, execution, they threw away their normal pills. Amazing ideas, terrible execution. Other times, the other way around. That is Miraculous Ladybug and Adrian. Let's talk about him, shall we? In this video, I'll be talking about Adrian's character assassination in season four. Because for me, that season ruined Adrian in the worst way possible. Before we get into season 4, let's talk about the premature seasons. Let's talk about why I used to love Adrian a lot. Before season 4, Adrian is mostly shown as a superhero who has a really difficult personal life. His father never had any time for him, he doesn't even know that much about his father, he never had any birthday parties, and when he was allowed to go to school and make friends, he was experiencing something brand new since he was homeschooled for his entire life. These reasons actually work, not because they are sad to begin with, but because they were presented in the correct situations, most of the time. I can give you many examples of pre-season 4 episodes where despite doing something stupid, Adrian Adrian is sympathetic for real. But the best example I can find is, according to my research, this is the first episode ever made in the show. The Bubbler. It was Adrian's birthday and he wanted to throw a party, but his father wouldn't allow that. After eating lunch, he goes outside to find all of his classmates gathered and the Bubbler starts to party. Adrian thinks he should save Nina, but Plague persuaded him to just enjoy the party for a while. And Adrian was gladly convinced. That decision is stupid, but very believable, because I know that having a birthday party and doing something he wants to do are two things he has never done before, as it was shown a while ago. The understandable reason to why he he's doing a stupidly irrational thing in this scene makes Adrian very empathetic and just downright tragic. I felt bad for him to be honest. It gets even more tragic when after he's done partying, he admitted that he was being stupid. I think I've been a complete idiot. The writers did a fine job here because every piece of the puzzle fit very well and are all in the right places. Context is the heart of any type of given task, while the execution is the soul. If the context and execution don't work together, the whole thing will fall apart. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Let's get to Adrian's love for Ladybug. Keep in mind, we're discussing Adrian BSF before season 4. That's fun to say 5 times fast. In my opinion, Lady Noir is not a great ship since it is one-sided, meaning it's a ship that's only good for one shippy, which is Adrian. Lady Noir is the ship for Adrian, not for both. Some people say that it's best for Marinette to move on to Cat Noir because we all know that she has an unhealthy obsession with Adrian. I honestly disagree. I think the best thing for Marinette to do regarding her love life is to love herself. You know what they say? If you want to be loved, first, you gotta love yourself. <laughs> Anyway, for me, it makes sense for this guy to fall in love with Ladybug, just like how it makes sense for Marinette to fall in love with Adrian. Yeah, looking back, it actually does make sense for her to instantly fall in love with this guy. It's very common to get super excited over a crush. What does not make sense, however, is the mere fact that she has an unbelievable amount of obsession. Where the hell did this come from? Horrible parents? Horrible life? Tragic backstory? Horrible influences? Normal human instinct? 
What about that last part? I just find it hard to believe that she would go that far more than one time. All because she has a crush on him. Is this still considered having a crush on someone? The truth is, no. This is simply obsession now. Obsession is where you cannot stop thinking about one person. To the point where it interferes with much bigger things that are happening right now in your life. It may involve collecting images or objects or personal, private, personal, private, personal, private, personal, private, daily schedules. Also, it'll make someone very entitled. Like no one is allowed to be his girlfriend but me. That's why I... I hate Adrianette. It's toxic, annoying, creepy, cringy, unhealthy, tiring, and most importantly, unacceptable. Well, it will be acceptable if this is a show like South Park. But this is a kid's show! Yeah, you love using this excuse a lot, don't you? Well, now it's my turn, you stupid f bitch. The fact that it's supposed to be funny and cute in a kid's show, and the fact that presentations of boundaries cannot be found anywhere whenever this stupid ship is on screen is truly unacceptable! Unlike Adrian's love for Ladybug, this is way better because at least it's a lot more acceptable in my opinion. There are some times where Adrian gets way too in love with Ladybug to the point where it gets creepy, annoying, unhealthy, and transformed into just plain obsession, but at least boundaries are presented. Let's get to the only two episodes where in my opinion, Adrian sucks but not that much. I used to love Glaciator a lot, but looking back, I just like it now. There is one part I hate about it and that is this. Basically, he wants to go on a date. When she didn't show up, he decided to talk to Marinette for a while. After that, the stupid ice cream man gets a cool I hate this guy. I just want to get this out of the way. I f hate this guy. During a serious fight, a serious fight, while innocent lives are under attack, Cat Noir gets angry and blames Ladybug all because she did not show up for the date. Are you kidding me, bro? Take a look around! <laughs> Well, I didn't really hate Adrian that much in this episode because at least his stupid behavior lasted for a short time and he actually said sorry and got back to work. I'll give him that one. Now let's talk about Siren or Siren. I forgot how to say that. I think it's Siren. I used to hate Adrian in this episode because of this scene. I still dislike his decision, but not 100%. He is willing to renounce Plague all because Ladybug wouldn't tell him what he wants to know. Now I actually understand why he would act that way. He's been her partner since the beginning and he has always done his best in that occupation. So for me, it makes sense that he would be angry. For not being able to know, since he has every right to. He deserves credit. What I cannot seem to give a pass, however, is Cat Noir getting angry about that during a time like this. You're planning on giving up while people are in danger? I want to be just like you when I grow up. It's true that he deserves some blame for that attitude, but everyone knows who truly deserves all the blame in this specific situation. Before almost giving up, Master F arrives and instead of talking to Adrian about his feelings about Ladybug and patience like an actual wise mentor he just says he'll explain everything after watching season 4 I don't think he did explain not even off screen since Cat Noir didn't f change Cat Noir deserves blame especially him he is the worst mentor of all time even worse than Roger from American Dad my sensei made me a master using a variety of unorthodox methods fight Brush, brush. I Bottom line, before season 4, Adrian was awesome and stupid. Only a little stupid. The good things outweigh the bad things. Okay, let's get the season Quack-Tro. Many of my viewers seem to be confused that I ended up hating Adrian but not Chloe. The writers ruined Chloe more than one time, but I still don't hate her in the end. The writers also ruined Adrian, and it was successful because I hate him now. Why is that? It's not that hard to understand. Maybe it is. I'll do my best to explain. I already talked about why Chloe's intentional CA doesn't make me want to dislike Chloe, because if I do that, I'll look like a fool who easily fell for someone's pathetic trap. As for Adrian, the way I see it, this is unintentional character assassination. In my opinion, when it comes to these things, accidental is even worse than intentional. That is Adrian. Adrian CA. It is accidental. It all began with lies. I hate this chapter, mostly because of how the breakup was done. It looks good, but internally, it's one of the worst breakups I have ever seen in TV history. No exaggeration. It's truly awful. Back then, I thought it was bad, but looking back, god damn, it's bad! Basically, they broke up because Kagami can't seem to trust Adrian anymore due to Adrian leaving Kagami constantly and she must not know why. It's like this guy is the real problem with the relationship. This cannot work because of him and him only. He's the bad guy. But the truth is, they're both the bad guys in this situation. Let's get to Kagami first. Not only did they make Adrian a big piece of shit, but also Kagami. This is the one and only time I dislike Kagami. It all began when she lied to hang out with Adrian. She talks about why she loves sketching. She then tells Adrian to do a pose that reflects his personality or something like that. I promise, this is me. No, that's you when you're being silly. Okay, where the hell did this come from? Why is Kagami a control freak? This does not make rational sense. Before they officially became a couple, Kagami was serious. Until she starts being funny, when she became friends with Marisu and Adrian. Out of nowhere, now that these two are together, she's serious once again, and is obsessed with Adrian being perfect. Tell me why! Tell me why. That's not even the worst part. 
come here and give your granny her kissy kissy. I get that she's not that good at socializing, just like Adrian, because they both have terrible parents. But why can't she seem to notice or care about the level of uncomfortability in his eyes? I mean, can you tell from the look in her eyes? Can you tell from the look in her eyes? That she is enjoying making her boyfriend uncomfortable? That makes me want to doubt that she actually loves him. Do you love me too? But what about you? Do you love him or just his image of perfection? Please speak some sense, woman! Would you believe that that is actually not one of the reasons why they broke up? As I said before, the entire reason why they broke up was because Kagami couldn't trust him anymore. Not because Kagami is a control freak, not because she's a f psychopath. This feels like something Marisu would do if they would be an official couple. Not Kagami. She's like an entirely different person here. A different person that I don't like. I mean, I get why she wants to kiss. They're a couple. But come on, dude. Would you just back up? I know he's your boyfriend. But that doesn't mean that you can forget about personal boundaries. Is this intentional CA for Kagami? If so, then they did a great job. Because not only did it not get too much focus, literally it's just one episode, but it is unacceptable compared to calling Chloe out for doing bad things. Kagami also did a bad thing here. And yet, she was never called out? This just makes me wanna- Let's get to Adrian now. The entire episode is about how Adrian's superhero life is responsible work and requires sacrifices, like leaving your girlfriend in the middle of a date or something like that. The problem for me is that it's just hard to believe that, because all I witnessed in this episode is Adrian thinking hero time is super fun time. Super fun time you're all I need. And a great chance to get Ladybug's attention. Does he even care about being a superhero? I don't think so, because he constantly teases Ladybug, he doesn't understand nor cares about what she's dealing with right now, and he's willing to sacrifice himself just so he can see her irresistible angry face. Yeah, but I can't resist this angry little pout of yours when you bring me back. I see what you're doing. So punny, so humorous. I dying laughing. I dead now. It's almost as if he doesn't think it matters if people are under attack and or if his partner is going through a lot of stressful things. It's almost as if he doesn't think it matters if he actually died here and left Ladybug all alone. I think the only thing he cares about is his personal feelings. The other worst thing about this guy in this stupid ass episode is that before they broke up, Adrian reasserts his affection for Ladybug, which means that Adrian has learned a valuable lesson. And that is nothing! So the bottom line is, these two are garbage. This breakup is garbage. Lies is garbage. Well, at least Kagami apologized to Adrian in the finale, which is awesome, but what about Adrian? <sighs> Next episode, Sent to Bubbler. This was honestly going really sweet, thanks to Rina Rouge being so awesome, but it slowly goes to shit after she contacts Cat Noir. There's only one two-person plan, and that's Ladybug and me! Why exactly did he do that? Tell me why. Tell me why. Because... I think this is the context. He purposefully destroyed private property because he is extremely selfish and super entitled of being the one and only partner Ladybug must have. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why exactly should I feel sorry for that? I can get why he's mad. He's not being trusted by the person who should trust him after everything they've been through together. But the way he says his dialogues and the fact that he's acting like that during a time like this makes him look like a selfish crybaby who doesn't care about actual important things but his personal feelings for Ladybug. What if the falling concrete fell on people? What if you actually got someone killed? Do you give a fuck? I don't think so since you're too busy whining about the fact that someone else is helping Ladybug to save innocent lives! Will you please get over yourself, you stupid son of a bitch? I'm sorry, but it's just really hard to feel bad for that, considering how Cat Noir's motivation is absolute BS. I heard some people say that Rina is treating Cat Noir like garbage in this episode. Tell me why! Tell me why. She's just giving him instructions on what to do during a serious situation where innocent lives are at stake! Okay, but tell me this, Cyrus. Why would she even bother to contact Cat Noir if she's not even going to include him in the plan? For God's sake, have you ever heard of Just In Case? Just In Case? Just. In. Case! It's insurance when your budget's out of place. She contacted Cat Noir just in case if he cataclysms that stupid looking thing. Santa Bubbler is a Santa monster. So if Cat Noir were to cataclysm that stupid looking thing, it'll go ape sh and the bubbles will pop, which will kill Alia's family. I guess Cat Noir's personal feelings really are more important than saving innocent people who are in danger. 
Good for you, man. Good for you. Next is Glass Eater 2. I'm just gonna say it right here, right now. I hate Glass Eater 2. I used to think it's okay, but after rewatching it again, there's a slight possibility that I might put this below Ephemeral. Maybe even below Panel Team. It's not official, but a possible scenario. Yes, I think Glass Eater 2 is that bad. All because of the ending. Before we get to that, let's talk about the episode. Once upon a time, Ladybug has had enough, so Adrian tries to move on. One thing I can't f stand about this episode is that Ladybug is portrayed as someone who is in the wrong, while Cat Noir is in the right and deserves sympathy. Yeah, harassment is sympathetic. The one who tried to defend herself from being harassed is unbelievably terrible, am I right? After trying to move on from Ladybug, Cat Noir hangs out with Mari Sue. It's honestly really cute, and it's the only good thing about this episode, but we're here to talk about the bad stuff, so skip ahead. After this stupid, stupid, stupid moral Got akumatized. Ladybug and Cat Noir come out to save the day. It's not that complicated, you know. If I tell you something annoying, just stop doing it. That's all. Please remember what she just said here and here. The girl who falls in love with you will be lucky too. In the end, Adrian goes back to being obsessed with Ladybug. Maybe if I were my true self with Ladybug, she'd fall in love with me. This isn't my show! SpongeBob, the remote control's broken! Get over here and fix it! It literally contradicted the main lesson this stupid episode is trying to convey. If you're annoying someone, then stop! That is the lesson, right? Or, or is it this one? The girl who falls in love with you will be lucky too. I guess it's because... <sighs> Shut up! I guess it's because Marinette's confession rehearsal was so goddamn incredible. Cat Noir got convinced that the girl he likes will eventually fall for him someday. So let me get this straight. I want to make sure that I'm being a good student. Cat Noir was finally developing. These two had a battle with this stupid idiot. With full competence and responsibility. No problems whatsoever. They performed a Thanos snap, turning all of that development to dust. And somehow, somehow they want me to believe this is a happy ending. And not a joke, nor a setup to upcoming terrible events. From the atmosphere to the theme song, I think it's clear that the writers wanted me to think that this is, in fact, a happy ending. Tell me why! Tell me why! 2 out of 10. Or maybe a 1 out of 10? Nah. 2 out of 10. That's final. Could have been the best. And I still mean it. It's mostly relaxing, but the ending made all of that pointless. It made the entire episode a waste of time. Why bother showing us that Cat Noir is finally trying to change, when he's not even gonna change at all in the end? Tell me why! Tell me why. I would honestly accept this if it's meant to be a funny joke. I mean, take a look at this one SpongeBob episode. Can you spare a dime? Squidward got fired. Oh wait, no, Squidward quits, not get fired. Let me just rewrite the script. Squidward quits after getting falsely accused by his boss. Squidward quits after getting falsely accused by his own boss, which is absolute bullshit. Squidward lost everything and decides to move in with Spongebob for as long as he needs. Eventually, Squiddy got obsessed with having a free life. Spongebob forces him to get a job again. He also forces Mr. Krabs to rehire Squidward. In the end, Squidward finally got his job and life back on track. However, Mr. Krabs did not change and still accuses Squidward for something he did not do. Spongebob puts on a maid dress, implying that it's gonna happen again, and that is where the episode ends. Yes, nothing changed after the end, but I enjoyed it because it's meant to be funny. And it worked because I laughed out loud. Notice how this particular theme song plays and Spongebob Bob's face looks like this. It's crystal clear that the writers did this as a joke. And it worked. Shut up! And it worked 100%. But this? F*** you, Adrian. I hope the Sword of Damocles falls upon you while you're still young, you f***ing b***h. Next up is Haksan. I honestly can't decide if this is the worst episode or this one. Or this one. Which is the worst episode for Cat Noir? I'll think about it. In this chapter, Gabby made a really awesome Senda monster with a lot of potential to defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir. But instead, he used it for just this one thing. He doesn't even bother to think that maybe, just maybe, it might be a great idea to use this again. F*** you, Gabriel. Marinette leaves Paris with her family, not before giving the Ladybug Miraculous to Alia. After she transforms into Scarabella, Cat Noir tries to kill her at first sight. Well, Cataclysm can't actually kill a Miraculous Holder, nor a Senta Monster. It can only hurt- SHUT UP! It can only hurt them in a very serious way. Or, when it comes to Senta Monsters, it can make them go ape shit. So, I think that's what Cat Noir was trying to do. Now, I get that he would be mad at discovering the fact that a stranger is using the Ladybug Miraculous instead of his actual partner. She could have been an imposter made by Shadow Moth. Also, it's true that Marinette or 
Alia could have called him and explained what was going to happen. I know I said I'm fine with a character who I'm supposed to be loving acted so irrational. As long as he or she faces consequences, admits the mistakes that were made, and learns a lesson in the end. Cat Noir may have faced a consequence for almost destroying Alia. He got his ass kicked, but honestly, I don't care. So what if he faced a consequence? Does that take away the fact that he is such an unlikable freak in this godforsaken installment? Sometimes facing consequences alone isn't enough to automatically make a character likable and or sympathetic. In this episode, that's definitely the case, in my opinion. Look at his face. It's like he's not even sorry for what he did. He doesn't feel any regret nor remorse for what he tried to do. And that's terrible, considering the fact that this is canon now. Do you recall the NYC special? Someone said that a certain interlude from season 5 has proven that this TV special is in fact canon. Remember this part? I distinctly recall defending Cat Noir here, because what he did was understandable and justifiable. Ladybug said that she can no longer trust him during a serious fight. Not only that, but he also accidentally killed someone or something. Yes, he does deserve some blame. He could have just calmed down and think for a second, but at least I understood why he would do that. I despise the NYC special so goddamn much with a burning passion. Adrian was the only interesting thing that the movie had to offer. The only interesting and likable thing. But after watching this episode, and after finding out that this is canon, it made both the NYC special and Haksan age terribly at the same time. The fact that he did not learn anything from this traumatizing experience made this scene even worse than ever. And it makes me want to officially take back my defense of Adrian in the NYC special. And it especially does not make me want to sympathize. It gets worse actually. After finding out that she's on the good side, Cat Noir still whines about the fact that she is not the ladybug he knows and loves, while innocent lives are in danger. Would you please grow up? I don't want to grow up. I want cookies and milk. Give him a break, Cyrus. He's just a young teenager. Yeah, he is. He's just a young teenager. So is Spider-Man! He's a teenager as well! And you don't see him acting like a crybaby while saving people! He learned to be responsible because of his uncle's death! That moment made him learn something. Since he has great powers, he needs to have great responsibility. He needs to be a man. A Spider-Man. Adrian supposedly had somewhat the same experience, and yet he's still irresponsible. Well, I think it's okay for him to act irresponsible and immature because, you know, Miraculous Ladybug can always fix everything in the end. Back then, before season 4, I thought he was a decent and funny superhero, like Spider-Man or Blue Beetle. He may be annoying sometimes, but at least he mostly gets the job done competently and responsibly, like a real superhero. Season 4 made him go too far with being funny, and it unintentionally made him a terrible superhero. A terribly irresponsible superhero. Who I am expected to be loving and empathizing with according to the writers. Give me a f break. Anyway, let's get to the ending. After defeating the robot thingy, whatever that name is, Ladybug said sorry for not informing him before, which is nice. Then they start a private heart-to-heart -heart conversation. About what? Is it about A, their partnership, B, lack of trust between them, or C, Cat Noir selfishness. The way this scene was executed is honestly good. From the background color to the countenance, I can tell that this is a serious heart-to-heart -heart conversation. And I can also tell that Cat Noir is uncomfortable talking to her. It's all very eye-catching. It perfectly captures the mood. If only the context is something else. If only this had a different meaning. This could have made the entire episode amazing. It could have made Cat Noir's nonsensically immature and selfish actions forgivable and comprehensible. If only they talked about something else during the ending. This would have been Cat Noir's perfect chance to finally talk to Lady about him being left in the dark all the time without any good justification. It's the perfect time to talk about what's been going on between them and how they should fix it. From what I can tell, season 4 has been making this the biggest problem they've been having with each other. Unbalanced partnership, double standard, lack of trust between the two main heroes who have been through a lot together for the entire show. But Instead, they just they just talked about how much of a crybaby he would be if he never sees his lady ever again. As if that's the real issue they've been having with each other. It's not about Ladybug. It's not about both of them. It's all about him. Him. Important side note, Ladybug actually did try to talk about how their partnership is falling apart. Ladybug said this. I mean... If I found out that you told someone about your secret identity, I'd probably be upset too. But, um, Cat Noir immediately denied that by saying this. You didn't hurt my feelings. You did everything right. Paris will always need a ladybug superhero to watch over her. So, so, so the real problem really is, uh, Cat Noir is feeling so selfish. 
I hate this episode. And yes, I still think it's the number one worst Cat Noir episode. One out of ten, I am never taking that back. Unless Adrian really is a... Oh god, I'll get to that later. Kuroneko. At first, I love the part where Adrian and Plague discuss Cat Noir's true self. Looking back, it sucks. I mean, the elucidation is lovely. But the fact that Plague, a character in the show, canonically explained it out loud sucks. Because, you know, show don't tell. It would have been a lot better if this was shown and fleshed out in other episodes that can form an entire character arc for this guy. Not just in one scene. For me, this is a better way. Remove this scene and replace it with just Plague asking Adrian where all of his cheese went. And before the scene ends, Adrian smiles at Plague for successfully finding all of his cheese and then get to the ending. It simply shows that Adrian misses Plague. I still love this scene for what it is because it's one of the only things that makes any sense in Kuroneko. But in general, it sucks. I'm still not taking back my score though. 5 out of 10 forever never amen. I am also not taking back what I said about why this guy's reason for feeling depressed about the fact that Ladybug is fighting alongside other superheroes is absolute bullshit. How can I possibly feel sorry for that? The mere fact that Ladybug faced consequences such as sleep deprivation and a huge amount of stress all because of this guy feeling so entitled to Ladybug is truly unacceptable. Uh. Although it will be acceptable if the entire purpose is to make the audience hate Adrian and root for Marisu. Here is how I would fix Kuroneko. Keep the episode the same with the newly rendered scene that I just mentioned. Then, after these guys talk and before the end card appears, show a flashback of Adrian's tragic childhood that can perfectly explain why he He's been acting stupid. Show the audience how much Adrian hates it when he gets abandoned. Make it similar to that burrito episode from We Bear Bears. Remember that one? Grizz gets obsessed with this gigantic burrito. I'll admit, at first I really despised how he behaved because it's annoying and it made no sense whatsoever. But thanks to a certain flashback that was shown in the end, it all makes sense and I now understand and sympathize with Grizz. Ah, shut up! I'm trying to talk! and sympathize with Grizz. That is how I would fix Kuroneko. It's all about showing, baby. <laughs> Shut up! It's all about showing, baby, and it's all about context. That is honestly how I would fix every single episode where Adrian's character is being assassinated. Change the context. Give it different meanings. Meanings that are tragic, understandable, empathetic, and if possible, relatable. Instead of pure selfishness and entitlement for the sake of pure selfishness and entitlement. Now let's get to two more chapters where Adrian is assassinated. Risk. I can give him a pass for the whole episode since he is possessed after all, but not here. And Cat Noir, despite being the first and most amazing team member of all, is now just a holder like any other. I'll be real with all of you. I actually do believe that he is Ladybug's first. <laughs> Ladybug's first. I actually do believe that he is Ladybug's first and most amazing team member of all. But the fact that he said it out loud with his own voice, and the fact that it's not meant to be a joke, imagine Thanos saying this out loud. I am the best MCU villain of all time. Everyone loves me. Imagine if that's not meant to be a joke. Imagine if that is the driving force of the story. It's really weird, it makes the character look like a jackass, and it definitely does not make me want to feel bad for him. So I'm glad Ladybug kissed him, so he can shut the hell up! I was this close. I was this close to punching the TV screen. I am dead f serious. And Cat Noir, despite being the first and most amazing team member of all, is now just a holder like any other. Okay, I'm waiting for the punchline. There is no punchline. It's not a joke. Okay, strike back. We're gonna skip ahead to the ending because that is where Cat Noir and the rest of these guys were set free from Froggy's possession. Fun fact, I am not taking back every single thing that I said here. So here's a replay. And the scene where Cat Noir comforts Ladybug and promises that he will get them all back alongside her is, in my own unpopular opinion, disgusting. I think I'm the only one here who thinks that way. Here's why I think this is disgusting. Let us analyze the crappy buildup. The entire season 4, Adrian has 1. Infringed the orders of Ladybug for petty and selfish reasons. 2. Didn't decide to stop being obsessed with Ladybug like an absolute creep and an asshole. 3. Almost destroyed an innocent person intentionally and didn't even acknowledge it. 4. Became a damsel in distress several times. 5. Acted like a superhero who shouldn't be trusted at all. And finally, willingly gave up being a superhero for selfish and petty reasons. He still hasn't changed after all of that. I'm supposed to think that he's got Ladybug's back after all of that crap? No, I don't believe that he's her loyal partner. I don't believe that he is actually willing to be a real superhero at a time like this because I know that he wants something else. He's doing this not to return to Miraculouses, not to save the people of Paris, not to defeat Hawkmoth, but only for the sake of his selfish love for her. I'm basically watching a selfish piece of shit 
receiving our reward undeservedly. And yet, I'm supposed to be happy about this? This is supposed to be a heartwarming scene, but for me, it's like the writers are promoting selfish behaviors. And that's just disgusting. What if that's not Ladybug? Huh? What if that's Scarabella? Or anyone? What if he's fighting alongside another superhero who'd be willing to comfort Ladybug? Would Adrian still act like a real hero to save the city of Paris and the Miraculouses at a time like this? I don't think so. He's just so happy that he gets to comfort and cheer up his lady when no one else can. Deep down, I know he doesn't care about anything else, only her. I'll get to the conclusion after I talk about this. This is unrelated to the entire video, but I really need to discuss this. Well, this topic is somewhat related to this video. Now, I used to love the Cinder Monster theory because I thought it would be a great twist, as great as the twist of Steven's mom being Steven himself. But after thinking about it, after re-watching past episodes, this theory would make the show even worse than what it is if it's true. First off, what the hell is a Cinder Monster? According to my research, a Cinder Monster is a magical creature made by a human emotion, performed by a peacock miraculous holder, specifically an emotion that is strong, like jealousy, disappointment, betrayal, etc. Well, it doesn't matter what kind of emotion. The only thing that matters is that it's strong. That's what she said. <laughs> ah, never gets old. Just like pumped up kicks. Okay, so here's how it works as far as I know. You take a feather out of the... Oh, please, I don't know how to draw. You take a feather out of the Peacock Miraculous hand fan, and then uh, by using magical energy, you can transform it into an amok. And by using this, I can, uh, amokized, amokatized, possess. Uh, I can use this to possess any object or any person, so I can create Santa monsters. I think you can also possess people, like in the Heroes Day Part 2 episode. Uh, he was able to be, uh, yeah, whatever. For example, I'm gonna use... This stupid piece of shit. I'm gonna use this, and I'm gonna amok. I'm gonna possess this thing with my amok. And when that happens, does that mean this is the Santa Monster? No, this is just the remote control for the Santa Monster. By using this, I can now create. Uh, by using this, and by using the Peacock Miraculous, and by using my strong emotions, I can I can now create a Santa Monster out of thin air. Like for example, um, let's try to make this guy as my Santa Monster. So he, he's my Santa monster, and uh, as long as I have this thing in my hand, I can, I can make him do whatever the hell I want, and I can also see what the hell he's doing every single time, 24-7. He's my creation, I'm his god, and this is the remote control. Well, as if the Santa monster has this thing, the Santa monster can be free. But no, you're not free. You're mine. You're mine. Also, according to my research, a Cinta monster can uh, be complex and have really fun personalities. Like in Koroneko, that Cinta monster, Koroneko, has a really complex personality of a cat or a feline. So how exactly do Cinta monsters get defeated? Uh, one way, you can uh, take this object and destroy it so the feather can be free and become purified and turn into a normal feather. And when that happens, the Cinta monster will disappear. Another way... Um, the Peacock Miraculous Holder that made the Santa Monster can simply Thanos snap and uh, the Santa Monster will be killed. I got this information from the fandom, okay? And if I'm wrong, then they're wrong. I think. So I guess that's all you need to know about Santa Monsters. Hmm. Really? Is that, is that really all? Let me just check real quick. Okay, so, uh, being hit with the- oh! Very, very important side note, being hit with a cataclysm can make the Santa monster go ape shit. Remember that. And it can also break their link from the Peacock Miraculous Holder, uh, which means they can be free. Uh, the Santa monsters can, uh, can no longer be in control of the Peacock Miraculous Holder, but, uh, but they're gonna go berserk. Uh, and one last thing, if the Santa monster's amok is duplicated somehow, as was the case with, uh, with Mega Leech, What's Mega Leech again? Oh, that. All of the Amux must be released, captured, and purified before the Cinder Monster can disappear. And I think that's all you need to know about the... about Cinder Monsters. Yeah. 
I think that's about it. So with all of that information, does this mean the Centedrian theory or fact, I think it's a fact, is garbage? Duh! If Adrian is a synth monster since day one, then how the hell did Gabby not notice him transform and get away as Cat Noir every single day? You're telling me that he never, ever, ever noticed his synth monster do that? How did Adrian sneak out of his own house to go to school without his father's consent nor knowledge in Origins? Why didn't he just try to visually know where he was going? Why didn't he just command him to stay in his room? Aren't Santa monsters always being controlled and watched over by the creator? Why the hell did Adrian go apeshit? when he was hit by a cataclysm in Miracular. Santa monsters do behave like that when they get hit by a cataclysm, right? In Cat Blanc, Gabby had a hard time commanding Adrian to obey, but not in Ephemeral. All he did here was order Adrian to do a single command. Using the ring, he broke his will effortlessly. Here, Cat Blanc denied Gabriel's command by causing the end of the world party. Why didn't he just use the ring to command Adrian, the Santa monster, to obey? Felix is also a Santa monster, right? So after Felix stole the ring, why didn't Gabriel simply command him to return it with the other ring? Which ring controls him exactly? Which ring controls him? Does he need both of them to control both of them or just one of them? Do I even need to mention Gorazella? In that episode, Gabriel was having doubts and thoughts that Adrian is Cat Noir all along. If indeed you are Cat Noir, then transform, son, please. Why can't you just order him to transform? So you can prove your theory. He's a Santa monster, right? You can control him, right? You can see what he's doing 24-7, right? I know I sound like an idiot right now, but that's what happens. That's what happens when you try to explain this abominable catastrophe of ass! Santa monsters are a cool concept, but the explanations of how it works annoyingly makes no sense anymore. Now that they made this stupid stupid theory canon supposedly that's why i hate felix and adrian now it's simply because they make no sense at all and character assassinations adrian ca was unintentional he mostly gets rewarded and he mostly never got called out and when he was called out he doesn't fuck learn and yet i'm expected to be loving him in the end thanks to that i ended up disliking him so goddamn much even if it is intentional i still hate adrian because i think that's a genius way to execute a character assassination there is nothing more frustrating seeing a terrible person not getting called out getting rewarded and not learning a lesson for all of the stupid ass things he has ever done felix's ca was intentional and i still hate him because for once the writers did a good job convincing me that felix sucks i loved felix in his debut appearance I just thought he was badass. I started disliking Felix by the time it was revealed that he is a Santa monster. When I first witnessed this, I thought he was scared that Gabriel might call his bodyguard if he snapped his fingers, or is just not aware of what Shadow Moth can do exactly. But no, he is a Santa monster! It's a perfect example of a plot twist that was made purely for shock value, not for the sake of making any sense. It came out of f nowhere, since there was no foreshadowing, no premonitions, no buildup, nothing! Nothing but absolute retcon! It made no sense at all. They make no sense at all. That's the major reason why I hate them now. Wait, what am I doing? Hating on Felix and Adrian, that's what. Yeah, I know, but why would I hate on them? How can I or anyone blame them for anything they have done? They're Santa monsters, not people. Hating on a Santa monster is like hating on a robot slave. It just doesn't feel right for me. I'd rather hate on the robot slave master, because at least that makes more sense. <laughs> Shut up! I hate the explanations of how Santa monsters work, but the Santa monsters themselves, I don't hate them. So here's my official opinion about Felix and Adrian. I still care about them because they're very important to the plot, but I don't like them. I don't hate them either because they're just robot slaves, I think. Some people think that they are Santa monsters, while others still believe that they are, as a matter of fact, not Santa monsters. I'm not 100% sure, but but I am sure about this. Santa monsters make no sense anymore, unless if it gets more logical explanation in the future. And by some miracle, if this retcon will make more sense and explain why it's not really a retcon. Maybe they're just different types of Santa monsters. Maybe he's Emily's Santa monster and Felix is his dead father's Santa monster. Maybe Santa monsters can live even after the maker died trying to make them with all of their energy and strength. Maybe they're not Santa monsters? Enough already! Let's get to the conclusion, I can't take it anymore. The more I go on about this topic, the more brain cells I will lose.
In conclusion, Adrian C.A. is even worse than Chloe's. Chloe's character assassination wasn't done properly, since it was so forced, but at least it's a lot more acceptable compared to this guy C.A. Chloe is a terrible person and a terrible superheroine, but at least she gets called out in-universe and by the writers, especially Thomas Astruc, comprehensible and admissible. Adrian doesn't get that kind of excuse. He's a terrible person, and yet he doesn't get called out. He doesn't learn a single lesson. He doesn't change. And yet I'm supposed to be loving him? I'm supposed to think that this is a happy moment. Even if this was intentional, I still hate Adrian. Because as I said before, there is nothing more frustrating seeing a terrible person getting rewarded for doing stupidly selfish things. Amazing character assassination. If it was intentional, that is. I hate you, Adrian. But not this Adrian and this Adrian. Adrian! And I don't think I will ever take back what I said. Ladybug and Cat Noir, worst duo ever. So and Minami, best duo ever. Wallace and Gromit, best duo ever. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Do I still want Adrian to be the main character of the show? No, and yes. Hear me out. Adrian being the main focus and getting a lot of attention, not too much though, would have been an amazing way to make this show incredibly interesting. Whether you like him or not, Adrian is the most interesting character in the whole show. And as a critic, not as an Adrian fanboy, I am not- Ah, shut up! I am not taking that back. I mean, he's the son of the main villain. He's perfectly fit to be the main focus of the story, for God's sake. I swear to God, if he really is a Santa monster, I will give him the ultimate pass for everything he has done in this show, alongside Felix. However, I would still not consider it good writing. Adrian and Felix will be excused, but the entire zombified TV show is going to crumble even more if the theory is true. Some people say it's not true yet. Uh, yet? Is it true or not? If it's true, then it will forever be known as the retcon of the century. Unless, of course, it gets more logical explanation in the future, as I said earlier. But that would still not save the show from being garbage. Rooster Miraculous destroyed everything forever and ever, amen. If they are willing to cancel the show and reboot it someday with much better writing, then the show will be saved. Wait, Cyrus, that doesn't make any sense. How can a TV show be saved after being cancelled? If the show is cancelled, then it's no more. That means no one can do anything about it anymore. Not even saving it from destruction, because it's nothing now. Oh yeah, good point. Well, the show is eternally fu- What should I do? Running out of your life Don't you ever stop What I want, what I need is you What should I do? Running out of your life Don't you ever stop What I want, what I need is you What should I do? Running out of your life Don't you ever stop What I want, what I need is you
just can't imagine that.